can't actually tell right now, but I'm actually a leprechaun. Yeah, you heard it right. And what do leprechauns want? They, they're they after the pot of gold, right? Or wait, no, they have a pot of gold. And you're after my pot of gold? Get away from my pot of gold! Alright, if they can't see me, they can't get my pot of gold. My gold! Alright, enough fooling around. So, in this video, I want to talk about and tell you about why high schools don't really have any computer science classes, if any at all. So I am qualified to tell you about high school computer science classes because I am a good software engineer right now, so that's kind of relating to computer science a wee bit. And then I also used to teach uh, high school like around two years ago or so, or maybe 50 years ago, I'm not really sure. But um, <laughs> I used to teach high school math and science some time ago. So according to my sources, which I will link in the description, the like median or average um, high school teacher makes around 60,000, if not less, while the median or average uh, software engineer will make around like 99,000 or in the 90,000s, if not more, per year. So th those are the salaries of those people. And when I can tell you that when I was a high school teacher, my salary was like $37,000. This was in Florida, by the way. And that was really, that's way below the average. I mean, I guess I was a entry level teacher. So I guess that kind of makes sense why I was so low, but still that it's pretty low for, I guess, a full-time job. So from those numbers alone, why would you want to take the lower salary over the higher salary? And that's what a lot of people are saying when, or say, saying to themselves when they decide to not teach computer science and instead go for the, the special software engineering jobs that they want. And that's not that's not even mentioning the, the long hours that you have to teach, or not only teach, you have to be constantly up. Like one of my teachers when I was in high school said it was like a five man, or five, uh, five shows a day, because they taught five classes a day, which is a lot, and it, it puts a lot of stress on you. And many people think, oh, it's hard when you're a software engineer because you have to um, have deadlines for stuff like that. But you don't do five shows a day. That's that's a lot for one person to do. And that's also not even mentioning that you have to work on lesson plans and grade papers outside of your teaching, which makes you spend a lot of time outside of work. And it kind of adds up over time. But I guess it kind of averages out since you don't have to teach summers normally unless you do go for that some kind of option similar like to that. So oftentimes you do not get a benefits for signing up to be a teacher. Well, sometimes you do get those benefits. You get like signing bonuses. You also don't get many, um, I guess, stock bonuses for being a teacher because, you know, who's going to have stock for school? <laughs> Although one benefit for teachers is they do get pensions. I wouldn't know about that because I wasn't there long enough to get a pension at my high school. <laughs> I don't know how, it probably takes like 30 years to get a pension or something like that, but that's still a long time. So by that time, like you would probably accumulate a lot of stocks and 401ks and stuff like that at a software engineering place. All right. So who is going to take these computer science classes or who's going to teach these computer science classes? Computer stop. My Alexa went off there, sorry. So who's going to teach these computer science classes if the computer science majors do not want to teach them, you might ask. So the people that are going to teach these kind of jobs, or these these kind of classes, are going to be maybe people who couldn't complete the computer science major and went on to something else, or maybe like different majors altogether, kind of like... Um, maybe teaching majors, like they graduated with a degree in teaching and they wanted to teach and what's in demand right now is math, science, and of course computer science. So they'll try to teach these jobs and what they're, what's gonna happen to them is they're gonna have to learn at the same pace or like a day ahead in advance as the students, which is not a good teaching method. At least I don't think it is. And then once the, these education majors or whatever they are um, once they're teaching the computer science long enough they'll eventually start to learn that hey I could just get a job in software engineering instead of teaching here why why am I here and that's what they do and they get up and leave 
Well, they probably don't like get up and leave. They probably leave when the school year's over. I mean, that would be kind of mean to leave in the middle of the year, but I guess it might happen. So odds are, if you can find a job teaching for a high school computer science class, you can probably find a job in software engineering. So you might also claim that the things that are taught at the high school level in terms of computer science are not exactly what's used on the job, and you are definitely correct there because it's just the basics of like for loops. Can do a for loop. Can you declare variables? That's probably what's all that is taught. Well, I mean, not all that's taught, but that, there's some base. It's only the basics really taught at the computer, uh, the high school level. So maybe you can't get a job just with that knowledge alone. Maybe. So the cur curriculum for what is taught at the high school level is also likely to be outdated compared to what is taught as a college at a college level. So new languages and new technologies are not likely to be taught at high school level, and consequently, no one wants to hire someone who uses old languages and old technologies. I mean, there are companies that will hire people for this, but they're not, it, there's not that many. And the people that usually get them ha have been using those technologies for like 20 years, so they'll probably get the job instead of you. Sorry. So when there's no one to teach these computer science classes, what happens to them? Well, the administrators of the high school, like the, the vice principals, uh, what they're going to do is they're just going to say, nope, this class can't happen since no one's going to teach it. Uh, so, yeah, we'll just have to um, replace that class with another art history basket weaving class. My favorite. So, in, in general, the, the ones that teach these, these computer science classes are ones that cannot find a job in software engineering or like a tech-related field. Or two, just really love teaching, which I, I envy that. That's, that's great. I wish there was more people that love teaching. So this is similar to what happened with me when I graduated with a degree in physics. I couldn't find a, do a job specifically in engineering or physics, which I wanted at the time. So I thought, hey, maybe I'll try out um, teaching. I mean, one of my friends was being a, being a teacher in like some history field. So I, I thought, hey, like someone, I can probably teach math or science pretty well. Um, I taught biology, not the best thing for a physics major, but I mean, I tried my best for what I had, for what I put into it anyways. So it, it wasn't the best experience for me. And I think part of that in lies with um, most of the other teachers were like, I, wouldn't, I don't want to say most, but a lot of the other teachers were like twice my age, maybe three times my age, like really old teachers. Like it's, at least at the school I taught at, there was really old teachers and um or they all had like kids and stuff i couldn't relate to the other teachers and then the the students just weren't really respectful i mean who's gonna respect some guy right out of college when you're 22 and you start teaching like i wouldn't respect them well i mean i, mean, I guess i would i'm a pretty respectful guy but i i don't i wouldn't most people wouldn't respect them so if you got all past past all that stuff and you still want to teach computer science at a high school level that is great you should because we need more people like you, honestly. Uh, I can respect that, and I respect you for wanting to teach computer science, or wanting to learn computer science in this case, if you're not, if you're just a student. So um, some benefits of being a teacher is you get to watch people grow, and you can do that at a software engineering level as well. If you're like a senior level software engineer, you get to mentor your junior level intern, or junior level software engineers and watch them grow as well watch them learn how to code and well i mean not hopefully they know how to code but <laughs> if they're junior software engineers but maybe learn the technology stack that you're using and learn your code base and whatnot i mean you get to see your students learn as a teacher as well which you probably get to see that more i mean your job as a software engineer is not to mentor people it is to write code hopefully and maybe make sure that the code goes into production eventually. So um, another, I guess, benefit of being a teacher, there's a lot of benefits of being a teacher, but is that you get to, I guess, make friends that are outside of technology. Like since I became a um, software engineer, most people that you meet are gonna be somehow related to technology, maybe like QA people or like product owners. 
and they're they're always going to be related to technology and they're not going to be all, all artsy fartsy like um well usually like maybe like art teachers in high school they they're very some of the people are very different it could be a an interesting experience all right uh thank you for watching this video if you liked it make sure to like favorite subscribe and whatnot see you later